Welcome to Profit and Prosper, a podcast for entrepreneurs who are ready to make some money while doing what they love. On this podcast, we're going to pull back the curtain and talk about all things business and money, but I promise you this is not your typical boring numbers talk. I'm your host, Sarah Young, a CPA and CFO with over a decade of experience in finance, business, and leadership. I'm going to share everything I've learned from helping my clients grow more profitable businesses and keep more of what they earn while growing my own successful business along the way. You'll feel empowered and confident that you too can grow your wealth, live a rich life, and have an impact. Stick with me and you might even start to think that finance is fun. Let's dive in. Well, hello and welcome back. This is episode 61 of the Profit and Prosper podcast. And in the last episode, you heard me talk about my own personal wealth strategy, my own fire strategy, if you will. Today, I'm going to talk about specifically the order of investing. Step by step, I'm going to lay out the order of investing that we take clients through when we are working on their tax strategy, their tax planning, when we are talking about what to do with the money that they're making in their business, this is the order that I like to take people through. I've talked about different ways to increase your net worth back in episode 24. And in that episode, I gave different ideas for how to build your net worth. And so we're going to talk about some similar things in this episode except I'm literally going to spell out for you how I would prioritize your money. I will most likely put this as a carousel or something along those lines on my Instagram feed. So you can either take notes and write down the steps. I've got eight of them. Or go to my Instagram at it's Sarah Young, and then you'll be able to see that carousel. So you have a nice list that you can reference. I'm going to start with step number one and work my way down to step number eight. And this is how I would prioritize the cash, the profit that your business makes. All right. Step number one, to build wealth, to reach your fire goals, to start investing. It is your business cannot be leaking money. You personally cannot be leaking money. That means you need to be cash flow positive in all things as your first step towards building wealth. When I talk about all of these steps, know that I'm really combining your business and your personal cash flow because to me, it's kind of all, it's not one in the same, but it's all within the same system, right? We're thinking holistically here. So your business needs to generate enough cash flow to cover the expenses you have in your business and for you to be able to pay yourself enough money to pay all of your bills. And I know right here, sitting here right now, I know that a lot of you are not in that position. So obviously I have a whole ton of episodes talking about business cash flow. So you can go check out all those podcast episodes. But step number one, we have got to get cash flow positive. And it's not always just about selling more, right? It's not always about increasing your sales, although that's obviously a crucial part of your overall strategy here is you do need to sell more, but you have got to set up your business to be able to pay you a consistent salary. And if you want to get a sense of what those numbers look like, go back to episode 15, where I talk about how to calculate your, what I call baseline revenue goal, is how much money you need to have coming in to cover all of your outflows, including your personal pay. And then also go listen to episode 54, where I broke down the numbers for different business models that will pay you different levels of salaries. So your personal salary needs to be big enough to, of course, pay your personal bills, but also to make the investments that you want to be able to make to build wealth. Step number two, we need to have at least one month of cash on hand. I'd probably start with one month of cash, both in your business and in your personal life. So look at your cash balances. I want you to figure out how much does it cost you to run your business in a month and how much do you need to spend in your personal life in a normal month 
and I want you to save up enough cash to cover both of those so that you have a cushion. Because what I don't want to have happen is for you to not have cash on hand and then have something happen to where maybe your business doesn't cash flow for a month. Maybe you have a huge bill coming up. I don't want you to have to incur debt to pay those bills. So we want to have one month of cash on hand, both in your business and in your personal life. For your business savings, I don't include my own salary in my business savings amount. So when I'm looking at my expenses, I'm only including my ongoing overhead costs that I need to have to run my business. I'm not including my salary and I'm not including taxes when I'm thinking about a cash cushion because one, I'm setting tax money aside separately. If I get into a position where I need to have a cash cushion, where I need to use that, that means for that time frame, I'm not going to have taxes because I won't have a profit in my business. And then I have my personal cash cushion set up in my personal bank account. So if I need to not pay myself out of my business for a month, I would go to my personal emergency fund first. So one month of cash on hand for your business, just your ongoing overhead expenses. And if you have the type of business model where maybe you have contractors or you have inventory supplies that you only need if you have sales, I wouldn't include those in your first month of cash either because you're only going to incur those costs if you have sales coming in. What I mean by your overhead is the stuff that you're going to have no matter what that you can't just turn off. Okay, so one month of cash on hand in your business. If you don't have one already, get a business savings account and put your money there. For your personal savings, one month of personal savings to start up. Look at how much you spend in a normal month and have at least a month set aside. That way you can use it. If you can't pay yourself from your business, you have some money. If you have a surprise expense come up, you have some money. For this, I would go look at a high yield savings account. Go Google high yield savings accounts. These are accounts where you're going to have more interest than you would just in a run of the mill savings account. Put that one month in there, right? Start your emergency fund at that account. This one is a personal bank account. Step number three, I think you need to pay off any high interest debt. So when I say high interest, I mean things that are over, definitely over 10%. Potentially, if you have a 7 8% interest rate, potentially look at paying that one off too. The reason for this is if you have high interest debt, then you have a lot of your cash flow being eaten up by debt payments every single month. And so you need to make sure that you're able to pay off your debt. Again, I'm talking about business and personal, whatever your high interest debt is. This is most likely going to be credit cards. I would also look at the interest rates on any other loans that you have, your student loans, auto loans, personal loans, anything like that, okay? Start with the interest rates that are higher. There's different methods you can use to pay off debt. Go and Google debt snowball methods. I won't go into it here. You can go back to episode 33 and you can hear my personal story of how I once had $55,000 in debt and how I got out of it. Okay, but your next goal is to pay off high interest debt. I personally, if you have any balances that are really small that you could just pay off in full in a month, pay those off and then cut up the cards, shut them down, if you don't need them anymore, okay, then move on to the next one. If you don't have anyone that is particularly small that you could knock out quickly, I would go with the highest interest rate first because the faster you pay that off, the less you're going to pay in interest. Step number four, I think you need to go back and build up a full emergency fund. So in your business, again, and personally, in your business, I would say, you know, if you already have one month of cash on hand, build up to two maybe three. The longer your sales cycle, the longer it takes you to get clients, the more cash that you need to have on hand. I wouldn't go much beyond three months of savings unless you have a really, really long sales cycle. So we have some clients who are consultants who have corporate jobs, like their contracts, they will have contracts like that don't start for six months, nine months, 12 months. So in that case, you know, we do look at having more cash on hand potentially just because if they needed to, they they couldn't just snap their fingers and have sales come in versus if you have the type of business model where you can very quickly make sales if you need to, then you're you can probably be more comfortable having on the lower end of cash on hand, you know, two to three months. So I would build up to at least two months in your business savings. 
again, just focusing on overhead, not your pay, not other other costs outside of that, unless you need to save up. Like, let's say we have clients who have inventory purchases. They may save up for a couple months to like buy inventory, right? If it's like one big bulk purchase, stuff like that. Okay. But beyond that, two to three months of business savings for your personal life. The general recommendation is three to six months of personal expenses in your cash cushion. So you already have one because that was step number two. So step number three is going to be to build up to at least three months of cash cushion. If it makes you feel better, you can build up to six months. Just know the more cash you have on hand, the less you're going to be able to invest. So step four is build up to your full emergency fund. Step number five is where I think I start to differ from people like Dave Ramsey. So if you go look at the Dave Ramsey baby steps, nothing against Dave Ramsey. I don't love what he teaches. I think it's very old school and very aimed at people in the traditional retirement employee mindset, which is why I don't love it. But he says to go and pay off the rest of your debt, all of your debt except your mortgage, before you start investing. And this is where I disagree, especially if you don't have any high interest debt then you can make from investing safely. You could make six, seven, even up to 10% by investing in the market. Your investment returns. If you have you know, medium to low interest debt where the in- interest rate on that debt is less than what you could get by investing, then I would say, let's start making some investments. You're also gonna benefit from investing the longer you have money sitting in those accounts because of compound interest. I would say let's not completely disregard investing just because you have some debt left. Now, if you have like a 20% credit card, you can't beat that by investing. You need to go pay that off. That's why step three was pay off high interest debt. So step number five, my step number five is to start with some basic investments. We're going to look at either a traditional or a Roth IRA and an HSA. So for 2023, the Roth and traditional contribution limits are $6,500 per person. And the HSA contribution limits for 2023 are $3,850 for self-only coverage and then $7,750 for family coverage. I always start with those because the limits are lower and you get such a sense of accomplishment, I think, by maxing out your IRA or your HSA contributions or both. I also want to throw in a caveat. If you're married and your spouse has a job where they have a 401k with an employee match, I would also put in making contributions up to the employee match in this same bucket of the basic investing. With an employee match, obviously, that's basically like free money going into your account. And so we want to take advantage of that. I don't necessarily recommend making additional contributions until we work through the next steps. Now, as to the question of traditional or Roth, I say go for the Roth as much as you can. Remember, for both of these types of accounts, for the traditional and Roth IRA, you have to be under income limits that change every year. So you'll have to make sure that you are going to be under the limit. And for some business owners, like for me, when I look at my 2023 forecast, I don't think I'm going to be under the limit to be able to contribute. However, if I get to the end of the year and that changes, I will take some of the cash I have and put it into a Roth IRA. Do the Roth as much as you can unless you are in a high tax bracket, like in the 32% bracket or higher. Make a Roth contribution and have your spouse make a Roth contribution at their job if they have that option as well. Because although traditional retirement advice says when you retire, you're going to be in a lower tax bracket. I don't necessarily think that is true for you as a business owner. So think about when you're in retirement, you know, if you put all of your money into traditional retirement accounts, you have to pay taxes when you take the money out for for your distributions. So if you have enough invested, then you're going to be maintaining probably a pretty consistent level of lifestyle and income as you have now. Except when you're old, you also are probably more likely to have paid off your mortgage, which means you won't have a mortgage interest deduction if you even have, if you even itemize now. You probably won't have kids in the house, so you won't have child tax credits anymore. Like you'll lose some of these advantages that you have on your personal tax return. And 
you're probably not going to be making that much less money. At least I hope not. That's the goal for everybody listening. I hope that you are not living really poor when you retire, as is the case with a lot of people in this country. So there's also a camp that says eventually the United States is going to have to increase our tax rates to be able to continue to fund Social Security and Medicare because they're so underfunded. The only way to make the numbers work is going to be either to raise the retirement age or increase taxes. All things being equal, if you're in the same tax bracket now as you are in retirement, whether you make a traditional or Roth contribution does not impact the amount of money you walk away with. And so you have to look at the likelihood of what's the likelihood I'm going to be in the same tax bracket or higher in retirement. If you're going to be, if that's your likelihood, same or higher, but if tax brackets increase over time, because historically we're in a low tax bracket time, then you want to make Roth contributions to hedge against increasing taxes. If you think, you know, maybe you're in the 37% bracket and you live in California with the highest state income tax rate, maybe you think, hey, I'm going to be in retirement, you know, paying 20% overall instead of like 50% then maybe it makes more sense for you to make a traditional contribution. All right, so traditional or Roth is step five and the HSA I put in the same bucket. If you are healthy and you generally don't have to get go into the hospital, you don't have a lot of doctor's appointments, you don't have a lot of medical expenses, if you can get yourself on a high deductible plan that qualifies for an HSA, max out your HSA and put all that cash into investments, into index funds within your account, And then just pay for your medical bills out of pocket with the cash, you know, from your paycheck or from your business. That is amazing because HSA money is tax free in and tax free out for medical expenses. So I would say if you can max those out as often as you can. And I've had this conversation a lot, especially with my women clients who are married to men who have traditional jobs. Like they still are in that very traditional mindset of like, we need to put all of our money into pre-tax, you know, retirement contributions. And I'm like, okay, no, time out. We need to talk about this. My next step is I would put into this bucket paying off the rest of your debt except for your mortgage, assuming you have a halfway decent interest rate on your mortgage. So this would be car loans, student loans, any other personal loans that maybe weren't in that high interest rate bucket, but everything else except your mortgage, I would pay off. And I would wait until you are at step six to make significant donations. I have clients, and I'm not saying this isn't a good thing, like I, but I have clients who make huge like church donations, for example, and yet they are not re- saving for retirement. And I'm just saying we need to take care of you personally before going and making huge donations. If it is a priority for you, to make donations, I would say, in my opinion, wait until you're at this level and you're making basic investments for yourself first. You've paid off your debt before you start making donations. All right. So step number six is to pay off the rest of your debt. Step number seven is where we are going to start going into next level investing. In terms of investments, in step number five, we were putting money into a traditional or Roth IRA or an HSA. I should add, if you are outside of the income limits for a traditional or Roth IRA, you can probably open up either a solo 401k or SEP IRA and make the same, you know, $6,000 contribution, again, based on your business income. But I'm assuming, you know, that most of you will probably qualify for those contributions or you can maybe do a backdoor Roth. But when we're on step seven and we're talking about next level investing, this is going to depend on your personal goals. This means you need to have sat down and started thinking about your wealth plan. Depending on what your priorities are, I would either look at maximizing a self-employed retirement plan. So that would be either a solo 401k or a SEP IRA. Or if you're like me, I have employees in my business, I have set up a pretty traditional run-of-the-mill 401k. It's called a safe harbor 401k. If I wanted to put money into retirement, I would just do it through that plan. It's easier. The reason I have this is because I have employees. I can't have a solo 401k. And 
I want the Roth option and a SEP IRA does not have a Roth option. So I go the safe harbor route, which I can put, um, you know, up to the annual 401k limits into a Roth 401k. And so this is where I would do that if I wanted to max out retirement contributions. If that's your goal, I would look at one of these retirement plans. And if you're at this level, you absolutely need to have a tax accountant walk you through because there's so many different rules about depending on the type of business you have, how much you can put in, when you can put it in, how to open them, what happens if you have employees. Like it's definitely not as run of the mill as the regular old traditional or Roth IRAs. If you have different goals, this is where I would start saving up for those goals. So this could be real estate. If your goal is to have rental real estate, I would start putting money into my high yield savings account like mine is at Ally Bank. So I would have a bucket for real estate and I would put that money into the real estate savings bucket to save up until you can afford a down payment on real estate. The same thing goes if you are interested in buying a business, buying a franchise, buying a what we call boring business, you know, set money aside into a savings account until you can buy a business. Or if you're interested in something like I talked about in the last episode, a 7702 plan, like this is where I would make those contributions into that plan. So step seven was your next level investments. Step eight, this would be what I would call if you have so much excess cash flow and you're not totally sure what you would do with it, this is probably what I would do with it. I would look into a brokerage account at this level. I personally don't love piling a ton of money into a brokerage account because I think it's fine if you are going to leave the money in there long term, but I know a lot of people don't leave the money in there long term. For you as a business owner, I would maximize your self-employed retirement plan contributions before piling up money into a brokerage account. But if you have extra and you want to put it into a brokerage account, I would do that in this step. This is also where I would look at doing things for my kids. I'm going to focus on building up wealth for my children, or I only have one. So child at this level where I am taking care of personally, because here's the thing, y'all. I see a lot of people, especially women with kids who are married and their spouse is the primary breadwinner and they feel like their money is hobby money and they feel like they don't need their money. They put all of their earnings into 529 plans for their kids. And that's fine to want to take care of your kids, but you have to take care of yourself first. Make sure you have assets in your name. But it's at this final level where I would take care of kids if I wanted to put money into their 529 or put money into their Roth IRAs via my business. I'm going to do a whole separate episode on how to have your kids in your business. And then... This is also where I would do heavier donations if you want to, you know, make any large charitable donations. Or I even have clients who at this level start their own nonprofit, right? Where if you have a nonprofit set up the correct way, you personally making donations into the nonprofit to support whatever cause you want to support. This is where I would do that. The point is we're doing this when you are well taken care of in your personal life. So those are the eight different levels that I would walk you through to talk about how do you allocate the money in your business. So let me revisit them for you quickly before we wrap it up. Step number one, make sure your business is not leaking money. You need to focus your energy there because you've got to be cash flow positive both in your business and your personal life. Step number two, one month of cash on hand in your business and personal in your personal life. Step number three, pay off high interest debt. I would focus on the highest interest rates first and then work your way down to anything above that like seven to 10% range. Step number four, build up a full emergency fund of two to three months of cash in your business, three to six months of cash in your personal life. Step number five, we're gonna do basic investing, starter investing. So put money into a traditional or Roth IRA and your HSA if you're eligible for one. Step number six, Pay off the rest of your debt except for your mortgage unless you have a mortgage with a really high interest rate, in which case refinance that or pay that one off too. Pay off the rest of your debt so that you don't have your cash flow being eaten up by debt payments. Step number seven, we are going to do next level investing based on what your goals are. Okay, so you're doing the basics in step number five. We're going to start figuring out how much money do you need to contribute to reach your own fire goals. 
Like I talked about last week in episode 60, my own contribution goal is $30,000 a year. You want to figure out what your goal is and start putting that money away every single month, automate it if you can, to reach your goals. And then step number eight is where I would take care of other people outside of you. Take care of your kids, make donations, keep building your own wealth. But then if you're on track to do that, then with your extra money, take care of other people would be my sort of capstone step. I know that was a lot. Like I said, I will do a post on Instagram laying all these out for you so you can don't have to write them down. And again, if you are making money in your business, you have a tax bill. Every year your tax return process is a nightmare. You want to be able to talk to your accountant more than once a year for five minutes when you go over your return. If you want to start layering in tax advantage investments into your overall strategy, then go check out our concierge business tax service at trustyoungco.com forward slash concierge. We will be taking on a limited number of new clients each month from now until the fall, but the absolute best time to get started on doing all these things is right now. Please do not wait until next December to start thinking about what you're going to do for 2023. We want to start planning for it now. This whole episode, this order is literally what I work through with all of our clients in our tax and CFO services. Obviously, we customize it based on, you know, where they are. And so it's not necessarily like a one size fits all thing. Everybody has something going on that we need to layer in. But high level, this is the order that we go through. Okay. So if you want to work on this, go to my website, scroll to the bottom of the page, fill out the inquiry form, and we will get a consult scheduled where we'll talk about how we can do all of this, how we can help you save money in taxes at the same time, and all the other ways we can support you and your business and your finances. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, y'all, and I will see you back here next week. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. Now, I want you to go take some action. What's one thing you can do this week to create more profit in your business? Send me a DM on Instagram at youngcocfo and share your action item with me. If you have a question or topic you'd like me to dive into, or if you're feeling empowered about taking charge of your finances, let's continue the conversation. Go to profitandprosper.co to submit a question or topic for me to talk about on the show. And because we all profit and prosper better with friends, please leave me a review on Apple Podcasts, subscribe wherever you listen, and share the episode. Make sure you tag me at youngcocfo on Instagram so I can give you some love, and I'll see you in the next episode.